Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Bible study this evening um, on Wednesday night. Tonight, we're going to be studying our starting to study Hebrews chapter 11 to see what it has to teach us, to encourage us, and to challenge us. But as we do that, let us pause first of all and let's come before God in prayer. Dear God and loving Heavenly Father, we just pause again to come into your presence. Thank you, Father, that we can always do this, that we can always talk to you, that there's no limit, no restriction. And Father, thank you that you're always there to listen to us and to hear us. You are an incredible God, and we thank you for the love which you pour out onto us each and every day. Father, if we are struggling at this time, please just give us strength. If we find these days difficult, please be near to us. Lord, just continue to surround us with your arms, with your blessing. Um, help us to be able to reach out to you and to know that you're with us. Lord, as we come to study your word now, please just calm and quieten and still our hearts. Help us to hear you speaking as we hear your word. May you encourage us and challenge us. May you be close. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let's read together the first 12 verses of, or sorry, the first nine verses, first of all, of Hebrews chapter 11. Let's hear what it says. Faith is confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand the entire universe was formed at God's command. That what we see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man and God showed, his, showed approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed and God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without even knowing where he was going. And even when he reached the land God promised, he lived there by faith. For he was like an, a foreigner living in tents. So did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. That's the end of verse 10. Amen. What do you understand about faith? How do we explain it? How do we try to quantify it as such? What is faith? I've heard faith explained in this way, um, taking the letters of faith. Forsaking all I trust him, him being God. Faith is difficult to explain, isn't it? Faith is, it's trust, it's hope, it's confidence in someone we cannot see. Um, it's, it's, it's trust beyond understanding. You know, faith is so important for the Christian life. The world around us tries to explain, uh, endeavours to explain everything. We use science as a means to explain why things happen. Um, as you go to school, and if you do experiments in school in chemistry, um, 
it tells you this happens because of X, Y, and Z. Um, whenever you burn uh, a carbon, you get carbon dioxide and things like that. Um, if you don't burn a fill, you get carbon monoxide. You know, there, there's ways of explaining things. Um, you have a chemical reaction which releases a gas called hydrogen, which you can collect in, with a test tube, and you can make a pop on a Bunsen burner. And that's our evidence that it happens. So much of what we do, we, we talk about evidence base. It's the same in, in, in lots of aspects of life. Where's the evidence to do this? Where's, where's the evidence that supports this? Even at the minute with regards to, to vaccines, people are asking, well, where's the evidence to say that this works? Where's the evidence to say that this is safe? And we seek for evidence all the time, don't we? When it comes to God, we have to have faith. Because people don't accept the sort of evidence that we offer. When somebody says, where is God? Or does God exist? We say, well, look at the world around you. Yeah, but the world works by its own, its own means. You know, we're a planet that revolves around the sun. And Yeah, but who put the sun there? Who put the planet there? Oh, well, there was, a, there, was a, there was a big bang which created it all. Well, if there was a big bang, where did that come from? And, and that's where lots of people struggle, isn't it? Is with faith. How can I trust and yet, whenever you do look closely at us, if you look at our DNA, how can we look at DNA and, and not realise that that had to be designed, that it didn't happen by accident? If you look at all the animals, if you look at the plants, if you look at how things work together, how could we think it could just occur? And if you look at how we have misused the world and its resources, and how the world has gone wrong. There's evidence there. But why do we deny the evidence of God in the first place? It is so hard, isn't it? There's no easy answer when it comes to faith. Another practical example that we use sometimes is that we talk about a trust fall. I wonder if you've ever done that where you stand behind, you stand with somebody behind you and you, you put your arms out, you close your eyes, you put your head back and the person behind you says, now just fall and trust that I will catch you. That's an example of faith because you trust that first of all, the person will catch you. You trust that the person is behind you to do it. You trust that the person will actually catch you and not drop you. You trust that they have enough strength to catch you and not let you hit the ground, which would be very sore. Um, and you see different funny videos where people fail or people do it but don't catch. And that's, that's one way of showing practical faith. But when it comes to the Bible, the Bible wants us to have faith in God. That this is what the Bible is all about. Trusting that God is who the Bible says he is. And that he has done and will do the things that he says. So the writer of Hebrews in chapter 11 starts to give us examples of people. But also starts to talk about things. He says, faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. So the author's quite honest. We cannot see God. We cannot see heaven. We're past the time of Jesus, so none of us have witnessed with our own eyes now what Jesus has done for us. But through faith, we can trust that Jesus died and rose again for us. We can trust that heaven is real. We can trust that God is real, that he made this world around us. It talks about through their faith, the people of days of old earned a good reputation. You know, our faith sets an example to others. One way which we see that very practically, especially this time, is in death. When somebody who we know has been a follower of Christ dies, for those within the family, those within uh, their friends who know that they are a follower of Christ, we have a peace about us. 
because we know where that person is now. Yes, we are still heartbroken because we miss the person, but we have that assurance that that person is now with God in heaven. And through us having that peace that can speak to others. That, that's one way that through faith we earn that good reputation. It's also about trusting and whenever things are, are hard and difficult, we trust that God is in control. Uh, we were reading this morning about in, in Proverbs about how we don't need to know or understand everything because God is in control. And, and that's, that's faith. Faith is trusting what we cannot control, what we cannot um, influence ourselves, and trusting that God is in control. Verse 3 says, By faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we see did not come from anything that can be seen. That what we, see, not what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. In other words, the, the world was created out of nothing. There was nothing, there was void, and God spoke, God commanded, and God created the world. Now, whenever he did that, was there a bang? I don't know. Was there a flash? Who knows? We don't know because we weren't there. Maybe God used a bang or a flash, or, or whenever he created it, that's what happened. Maybe everything just appeared. We, we don't know. But faith is trusting that God did make it. His means of making it's beyond us. But faith is just trusting that God did make it. For some people, that's hard to do. For some people, they want to see the balance sheet. They want to see the evidence. They want to see the, the, everything that's there. And we just don't have that. Um, I've heard people say before, you know, if somebody asks you, well, well, prove to me that God exists. Somebody comes back, well, well, prove to me that God doesn't exist. You know, it, it, it is a hard thing, isn't it? But it's about trusting. But when you think about it, we trust every day. We trust that whenever we, we press the brakes of our car, that it will stop us. We trust that whenever... Um, the red light shines for traffic lights and the green man crosses that we can cross the road safely. You know, there are different areas where we show trust and faith every day and even within science. We trust that the scientists have got the understanding right and that's how we understand other things. We show faith every day in what we do. But the author is calling for us to show faith in God and that what God has said is true. So he decides to give us some practical examples. And he starts right at the very start of the, the Bible and starts to work his way through. He starts with Cain and Abel. Verse four says, it was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man and God showed his approval of his gifts. Though Abel is long dead, he's still able to speak to us by his example of faith. People will often say, well, what was the difference between Cain and Abel's gift? Cain brought um, a lamb or a goat, the first the firstborn of the flock. Um, Abel brought from the land or Cain brought from the land. What was the difference? Because in the Bible, we have sacrifices which are grain and oil and animals, and they're all used as offerings to God. The difference was in Abel's heart. He came with the right attitude, the right approach. He came for the right reason. He came in faith, trusting that God would bless his gift and his offering. We don't know much about Cain other than he was angry because God didn't accept his offering. But that anger shows us, well, was he simply bringing an offering because his dad told him it was the right thing to do or because he saw Abel bringing an offering. So he thought, oh, I better do the same. Um, just because he felt obligated, but Abel brought it because he wanted to bring the offering. And that starts to talk to us about our attitudes. Why do we want to trust 
God? Why do we want to have faith in God? Is it for our own means? Or is it because we truly believe that God is real and we want to bring glory and honour to God? We want to recognise him as for, for what he has done and everything that he continues to do every day. What is the motivation behind our faith? The motivations behind our actions? Think about that. Verse 5, it was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him up. Um, there's a reference to that in Genesis 5 verse 24. He was taken up for he was known as a person who pleased God. It is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who seek him sincerely. Enoch is an unusual character. It tells us in the Bible that um, Enoch and God were having a conversation and they simply walked up into heaven. Enoch is one of those people who, who didn't see death. God just took him um, because of who he was, because of his faith in God, and because he pleased God. And talk then about pleasing God. Well, what, what pleases God? There's a good question, isn't it? How do I please God? If I do believe that God exists, how do I please God? And why would I want to please him? It says here that it's impossible to please God without faith. So God wants us to trust him. God wants us to realise that he is real. To realise that he does exist. To realise that he has a plan for all of us uh, and how we fit into that plan we don't know but we have to trust or have faith and it says that anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and he rewards those who seek him who sincerely seek him why do we seek God do we seek God because we want that relationship do we seek God seek God because um we just think it's the right thing to do. Do we seek God because we're scared for our own skin? Um, it's what makes us sincerely seek God. And if you think about it, if we do believe that God exists, and if we believe that everything that we see around us points to God being our creator, God, then we should want to acknowledge him. We should want to um, recognise that he is so powerful, so much more powerful than we are, that he is so important, and we should want him to have the right place in our lives, that we would worship him, that we would follow him, that we would want to do that, because God doesn't force us to. Um, you've got to remember we've been created with free will. We can choose to acknowledge God or say he doesn't exist. We can choose to, regardless if we acknowledge that God exists or not, we can then choose to follow him or do our own thing. God doesn't force us. But it says that he will reward those who sincerely seek him. Let me get another example. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him about things that had never happened before. Before. By faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. God told Noah that the heavens were going to open, that it was going to rain, that it was going to flood. Up until that point in the Bible, we don't have a record of rain. Um, if we look at Genesis, it talks about how the, the earth was watered by water coming up through the ground and by the rivers. So we don't have a record of rain. And suddenly Noah is in the middle of a place where there's no water. He's building this great big boat and telling people that there's going to be a flood. Because God has told him that's what's going to happen. And he trusts God. He trusts that God is telling him the right thing. That God is not lying to him. And that this will actually happen. 
Noah is ridiculed by everyone who's around him. He is made fun of. Um, but Noah doesn't worry about that. He's not concerned about that. His only concern is to do what God has told him to do. And then as he does that, God brings the animals to Noah, which then go on to the ark. The thing is here, it says that by Noah showing faith, he condemns the rest of the world. God trusted that Noah would have that trust in him, and he did. And then the rest of the world is destroyed. Noah had faith in something that had never happened before. And it happened. Verse 8, it was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him, called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. Again, God has a conversation with Abraham and says, I want you to leave. I want you to go to this other place. Um, I want you to realise that um, I will bless you there. Uh, you will have a great family. And at that stage, he has no family. And he does it. He steps out in faith, as we talk about. It says he, he went without knowing where he was going. God said he would, he would lead him, he would guide him. He didn't tell him, right, I'm going to send you to this place and this is how you're going to get there. God didn't do that. He just said, I will lead you, just, just, just go. It says he, he, and even when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith, for he was like a foreigner living in tents. So he didn't even have a house. He lived as a nomad as such. And he lived in tents. And it says that um, Isaac and Jacob did the same, who inherited the same promise. It said Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. Abraham trusted that there was a lot more to come. He had faith that God had a plan. And it talks about a city with eternal foundations, heaven. A city that wouldn't be shaken, a city that wouldn't fall. He trusted that God had that plan and that he was going to use him for that plan. And he does. Um, if we go read the next two verses, it was by faith that even Sarah, who was able to have that Sarah, who was able to have a child, though she was barren and was too old, she believed that God would keep his promise, and so a whole nation came from one man who was as good as dead, a nation with so many people that, like the stars in the sky and sand on the shore, there is no way to count them. So let's read the next verse. These, all these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. Sarah thought she couldn't have children. Abraham was old, it says here, the way the New Living Translation puts it was, um, he was as good as dead. God gave them a promise and they still trusted in that promise. Even though they died without seeing it fulfilled, they trusted that it would happen. They had faith. It said they saw it from a way off. So God had told them it'll happen. You may not see it, but trust me. I will make you great. I will make you into a nation. Um, I will use you to bless the rest of this world. And through his family, Jesus comes into this world because of Mary and Joseph. Uh, and then God brings salvation to the world. He brings a means for fixing our relationship with him. All these people showed faith. They couldn't see it themselves, but they trusted what God told them. Do we have faith? Do we trust that what God tells us in his word is true? Do we trust him that the promises that he gives us, the things that he says that are promises, are actual promises and that he will keep them? Do we realize or, or do we want to put him in control of our lives do we want to put him first do we want to have faith faith is what makes us stand out as christians faith is what sets us apart because we are trusting in a power that we cannot see without the evidence that the world is asking for 
and we follow him. Faith is so central and pivotal to the Christian, to what we do each and every day. It's our faith at times it gets tested, gets challenged. It's our faith maybe at times it wobbles. Jesus says to his disciples, if you have faith the size of mustard seed, you can move a mountain. God just wants us to trust him. God wants us to realise that he knows what's best and that he is in control. Just like Proverbs said, just like Solomon said, God has the plan. We don't have to see it, we just have to trust. How do you feel today? Do you feel trusting? Do you feel full of faith? Do you feel that your faith is weak? Do you trust God? I firmly believe that the Bible is true. I firmly believe that what it teaches us is true. I firmly believe that God is there for us and he wants us to trust him. And God wants that trust to grow each day. Will we trust him? Will we put our faith in him? Will we rely upon him? Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the challenges that it brings to us. Father, you bring us today the challenge of faith. Lord, help us to trust you. Help us to have faith in you. And Lord, help that faith to grow day by day. So we learn more each day to, to rely upon you and to trust your word. Lord, just help us this day, this night, the rest of this week to keep on trusting you, to keep on having faith. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining in this evening, folks. It's been great to have you as we have started off in Hebrews chapter 11. Um, next week, whenever we come back, it'll be the first Wednesday in February. So we're going to do, start to do something slightly different. On the first and the third Wednesdays of the month, um, we're going to be live streaming this study on Facebook and on Zoom at the same time. And then once we've finished the study, we're going to have a time of prayer on Zoom. So you can join in next Wednesday um, at 7.30, either by Facebook or by Zoom. I will, put, I will post the Zoom details on Facebook so that you've got it. Um, there'll be a waiting room which you come into and then I will let you into it. And I'll keep everybody muted as such in Zoom while we're doing it so that the Zoom sound's not cutting in on the Facebook feed. And then um, once we finish the Bible study part, um, and Facebook shuts down, then we will continue for a time of prayer on Zoom. So we'll start that next Wednesday, which is the first Wednesday in February. Um, let me get you the dates, which will be Wednesday the 3rd of February, and then we'll do that on the 1st and the 3rd, Feb first and third Wednesdays of the month, um, to have that time of prayer together. So please feel free to join in again with our prayer time. Whether you pray out loud or whether you just simply listen to us as we pray and you pray quietly from your heart, it doesn't matter. But the invitation will be there for you to join with us in prayer. So that'll be Wednesday the 3rd of February. So the prayer time will probably start round about 8 o'clock. Um, so if you can join us, please do so. But in the meantime, folks, please take care and God bless and see you next week. Bye bye.